So simply some of the tools that we're going to need for our project is, you know, obviously we're going to need the tool that we're making the mask for. You're going to need some leather, you know, good leather between uh, five and nine ounces is good. Uh, just vegged hands and you can get it through most any supplier of leather. <clears throat> you're going to need a, an awl, a sharpie marker, you're going to need a good pair of utility scissors to cut your leather. Should have a hole punch. Today we're going to use artificial sinew for the for the threading. You're going to need two different needles. All right, because when we do a saddle stitch, you're going to come in from both sides and go back and forth in the stitching. You're going to need cardboard for your patterns. Uh, I like to use tear mender leather glue. This stuff is pretty bomb proof. Uh, does a good job and we're going to need some clamps to use during the gluing process. Very first thing that we want to do is we want to take our sharpie and we want to trace the tool itself. This is roughly going to give us the outline of the pattern that we're looking at. Okay, so this is where our tool is going to be. Realizing that the mask, obviously, is going to come out to actually at least here because we want to put a welt in here. And now we would be going over the top of where the handle extends above the actual tool. And that's going to be like that because we want that welt in there as well. sides right there and then this is going to run back with a lace and it'll be tied off there so when we're done that's essentially what our mask is going to look like it'll tie off here it'll actually run through it'll loop behind the handle and then we just tie it off this way we don't have any type of hardware per se that's going to be um, failing us and we can replace the lace at any time. <clears throat> what we want to do now is now that we have our design of the mask that we're going to use is we need to go back and we need to cut the actual pattern that we traced of the tool itself. In the piece of cardboard that you're going to use, make sure you just put a center line. And that center line is going to be important. You have to remember to take into consideration the width right here of your tool when you're making your pattern for the top. Because this is going to be folded and then we're going to sew it in. So what we do is We'll take our tool, line it up pretty much right on that center line and mark right there the tool at its widest point. We 
if you look here at the original you can see how it does widen Now what I've done is I've taken in to consideration the width of that tool by doing this. And this is where we're going to start and then we'll go back here and that's where we're going to wind up ending. Line the top of your pattern with your tool. Okay, we know that that's the actual edge. We know that we need our welt, which is about a half of an inch, half an inch. We know we need to come back up here and add. Come back here. So now what you're going to have is that's half or one side of your pattern. The easiest way to do this is to take this and cut this and then fold it right there on your center line. Okay. Now that we have this here, we're going to find that center line. And then we're going to bend it. Come back over the top. Trace this as well. Now we're going to cut that.
And there, we basically have the mask for the tool. Now remembering where that fold was, again, because remember we have to take up for the space or the width of the tool at its biggest point. Put another fold in. Another fold here as well. Back to that center line. So you can see what it looks like. And now you can see what it looked like on top of the tool. Now we need to make the pattern for the welt. Which is going to be right here. is going to be our welt. We can actually put that welt, you can end it around here. We don't need it to go all the way up. We can if we want to. <clears throat> so, I'm going to get out my cardboard again. So what I've done is I've taken my pattern here, I've gone ahead and I've traced this, and this is going to give me my welt, which will be in between the two sides. We go back to cutting those again. Clean up your work area again and finish up. Just in case you don't understand exactly what I'm talking about with this welt, if you look right here, you'll see that's one side of the sheath and this is the other side of the sheath. And you see that piece of leather that's right in there. Well, when you're using stitching, they usually put a welt in for rigidity on a sheath and they don't want the blade to accidentally ride down in there and cut your threads. So they use that to protect the threads that we're going to be sewing in here. You know, obviously this one used rivets, but uh, we're going to be using the uh, threading today. Now we're ready to transfer our pattern to our leather that we're going to use. Now mind you again, your leather that you buy is expensive, all right? And we want to try to optimize it as much as possible. So, you know, move your pattern to the least amount of cutting that you're going to do. And maximize the amount of space that you have with the leather that you had. So, you know, if you need to make more of them, you don't need to waste it and go out and buy, like, another piece. <clears throat> so, what we're going to wind up doing now is we're going to take our Sharpie and we're going to go right ahead and we are going to trace this pattern. <clears throat> 